Whop, whop, and quop. Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome back to another installment of the Gaming Purchases Showcase here on the Bearded Gaming Network. I'm the Bearded One, as many of you already know. And today, as we do with every installment of the Gaming Purchases Showcase, I will show you all of the games and or gaming related items I have purchased since the last episode. Now as of this recording, the last episode actually hasn't aired yet. I haven't edited and everything, I just haven't uploaded yet as of this recording. So um, by the time this goes up, it will be up. So if you want to see episode 6, go check that out. It was all about uh, the 3DS games that I bought since I had, at the time, just recently bought a Nintendo 3DS XL. So go check that out and then come back and watch the magic in this episode. Now, with this episode, I'm going to try and do uh, things a little differently with this series. Um, I'm trying out a new format, as I do with a lot of the shows that are on the channel. Um, usually, uh, the videos are anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, and it's primarily me on camera talking about the games that I'm showing you guys. So today, with this episode, I'm trying out a new format for the show. Instead of me being on screen for 20, 30 minutes at a time just talking about the games, I am first going to introduce the games with a lovely close-up of the cover, as such. And then after the close-up of the cover, we will smoothly transition into some gameplay. So instead of seeing me on screen for the entire video talking about the games and just holding the case up to the screen, Instead, you will actually see real gameplay footage recorded by me of the game that I am currently talking about. And then in the background, you'll hear my uh, commentary on the game and my impressions, as we usually do with the show. So with that said, let's start off with this little gem right here, Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 3DS. Now, being a new 3DS owner, I knew that this was definitely one of the games I had to pick up for the system. I'm a huge fan of Smash, I've been playing it since I was a little kid with the very first one on the N64. And uh, to hear that they were bringing it to a handheld was very intriguing to me because Smash has always been a console series. And bringing it to a handheld, what will that entail? How will it change things? Well, I've had about two weeks with the game uh, since its release, and to tell you the truth, I loved it. This is probably actually my favorite version of Smash so far. Um, but keep in mind, I didn't really have a GameCube, so I never really played that much of Melee. I played the shit out of Brawl, and I had my... I had a fair amount of time with the original Smash. But this one, to me, honestly, I think is my favorite. It just feels the best. Even on the 3DS, which was the one thing that I was really concerned about was, how would the game feel on a handheld? Well, let me tell you guys. This game transitions beautifully to the handheld device. Like, it feels like Smash Brothers. Like, this isn't some watered-down version of the, the Wii U version that's going to come out in a month or so. This is a true Smash game. Nothing, well, I'm sure there were some things that were taken out, but nothing about the core Smash formula was taken out of this game. It feels very fluid, very responsive. Hell, even with the... Okay, the standard control scheme... Don't. Just customize your controls because that control scheme is awful. But once you find a control scheme that works for you, you will love this game. This game is very fun. It's faster than Brawl, but not, it's not as fast as Melee. So the speed has been kicked up just a tiny bit. Um, the modes are all fun. I love the classic mode. Uh, I get a kick out of All-Star mode. I love all the little mini games that all the Smash games usually have, like the Home Run Derby, Target Smash, things like that. Yeah, but just the gameplay itself, the core Smash Brothers gameplay, has been transitioned beautifully to the handheld. Like, if it wasn't on a handheld, I, I you could have fooled me to, obviously, but obviously the graphics would give it away, but... If you disguise this as the Wii U version, I honestly would not tell the difference because this game is that good. So yeah, anyone with a Nintendo 3DS, I highly suggest this game. I highly recommend this game if you have not picked it up yet. Next up on the Game Purchases Showcase, we have probably one of the most hyped games in recent memory next to Watch Dogs. Here, we have Destiny. Now, since this game was announced, there have been massive amounts of hype behind it. Like, it's Bungie's first game since leaving the Halo series. It's their first in a 10-year partnership with Activision, the publishers of Call of Duty. Like, 
people were not exactly sure of what to expect of this game. And then once it came out, the reviews were mixed across the board. Some people said this game is great, eight, eights and nines out of ten. Some people said this game was shit, four, three out of ten. And some people said it's okay, five and six. So the critics, the critics of this game have been all over the place. So I had some time yesterday to play it. I played it for a couple hours. And uh, to tell you the truth, I am actually really enjoying this game so far. Granted, I'm only in the beginning stages of the game and I'm only a level 4. But, from what I've played so far, my first impressions have been pretty good. To me, and Bone said this way better than I could have, it feels like a mix of Halo, Call of Duty, and Borderlands. Like, it looks like a Halo game. In some aspects it plays like a Halo game, but it plays more like a Call of Duty game. And, like, the looting and leveling up system is very akin to a Borderlands-style uh, shooter, looter game. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this game. Like, the shooting itself is probably, like, some of the best shooting I've ever felt in a video game. Like, Call of Duty has been the series that has been known for having the best shooting in a first-person shooter. Like, you can't beat Call of Duty in terms of game feel when it comes to shooters. But this game is very, very good. I was zipping around the battlefield, aiming left and right, popping off headshots, you know, things like that. With relative ease, like this game controls very well, um, it has a very cool art design, I gotta say. I love the visual aesthetics of this game. The soundtrack is fucking awesome so far, but of course, with Bungie you have Marty O'Donnell, so you know the soundtrack's gonna be some kick-ass stuff. Um, the gameplay so far, I'm having a lot of fun with it. There's n nowhere near as much loot as I would like in a game like this. But I think that's, you know, that's going to be saved for the later in the game when I'm a much higher level. But yeah, honestly, I feel like this game didn't exactly deliver on all of the hype, but it de did deliver on most of it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I can't wait to go back and uh, experience it further. And, uh, yeah, solid game. Good work, Bungie. I can't wait to see where the Destiny series goes from here. Next up, we have a game that I was very excited for up until its release. Uh, it's based on a TV show that many of you may know. Here we have South Park and the Stick of Truth. Now, a lot of people's eyebrows were raised when they announced this game. A fully-fledged South Park RPG. What? That makes no sense. And it's being developed by Obsidian Entertainment, the people who made Fallout New Vegas, and I believe they made uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that. But yeah, it was being developed by Obsidian Entertainment, one of the big RPG developers out there right now. And uh, people were very skeptical about this game when it was announced. But then, shortly after uh, its announcement, it was also announced that Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, actually had a lot to do with the development of this game in terms of writing the story and voicing the characters. So a lot of people's uh, skepticisms were put at ease when that was announced, that the creators of the show were actually helping make this game. I played it for about four hours, and let me tell you, this game is awesome. Like, to me, the closest thing I can relate it to is Paper Mario. You have the entire town of South Park to explore as your own created South Park character. Like, I'll put it up, you're gonna see in the footage, but as you can see on my character, it looks pretty damn similar to me. It's a very likely resemblance. So, you can create your own character as the new kid in town that moves into South Park, and the whole story is you're out to make friends in this new town and you run into Butters who is LARPing with a bunch of the other South Park kids. And then you get, you get hurled into this fight between the Drow Elves and the Wizards, or the Human, over the Stick of Truth, which is the almighty relic that whoever controls the stick controls the universe. It's basically just a bunch of kids LARPing in their backyard, but it's fucking hilarious. So yeah, you can explore the entire town of South Park, look for little secrets, talk to a bunch of the town's folks, go in a lot of the buildings and explore and find loot and other items and stuff. Uh, and then you get to the combat, which is turn-based, like a lot of RPGs are. And like I said before, the closest resemblance I can make is Paper Mario. Like, if any of you have played Paper Mario, you know 
that the turn-based battle system in Paper Mario is very context sensitive. Like for example, I might even put some gameplay up on the screen to show you guys of uh, Paper Mario. Yeah, like for example, with Paper Mario, you select the jump icon in the battle. And then you press the button during the action to inflict more damage on your opponent. You pick the hammer, you hold the stick back a few seconds, and then let go for maximum damage. Stuff like that. Like, once you pick the attack, there then has to be player input to make the attack stronger. That's exactly what this game is like. When you select an attack, you see a flash on your weapon, and then you press a certain button once that flash appears to inflict more damage or uh, initiate more hits or whatever. So, in that sense, the closest resemblance I can make is to Paper Mario. But um, the combat system in this game is very good. I'm having a ton of fun with it. Um, it's very fluid, very responsive, you know, it keeps the player involved, which is always nice. You don't want to just be sitting there and watch other people battle and not do anything. So yeah, Obsidian did a great job with this game. Like, I'm very impressed. And I can't wait to play more, honestly. So yeah, Stealth Park, Stick of Truth. Next up, we have another, probably <laughs> one of the three highest hype shooters of the year. Here we have... Titanfall. This is the first game to be developed by Respawn Entertainment, which is made up of Vince Sampella and the other guy that I can't remember. The former heads of Infinity Ward who were kicked out after the uh, whole scandal of Modern Warfare 2, where um, they sued Activision for not paying out royalties. They got kicked out of Infinity Ward and then they went and made Respawn Entertainment. That, however, was five years ago, so they had four or five years to make this game. And, um, this is basically, as it says on the back of the box, the future of multiplayer games. So yeah, it's developed by the company made by the former uh, ex-heads of Infinity War behind the Call of Duty franchise. This game is very similar to Call of Duty, however, it is very much different from Call of Duty. Yeah, the shooting itself is very, very similar to Call of Duty, like almost identical. It feels a little different, but you can definitely tell there was some influence from their older games in this one. However, what makes this stand out from any other shooter is one, the wall running parkour mechanics, and two, the titans. First, let's talk about the wall running. So basically, in this game, you have free flow movement. And if any of you guys have followed Bearded Banter and heard me talk about this before, I love free flow movement mechanics in video games. In this case, uh, the free flow movement is in the form of wall running, double jumping, and uh, just general parkour like ledge grabbing, uh, vaulting, stuff like that. This mechanic makes a Call of Duty style first person shooter game much more fast paced and much more smooth than any other game out there. Like, I was zipping all across the battlefield, jumping from wall to wall, jumping up on ledges, double jumping off of buildings. Like, the game feels great. That mechanic is a very welcome addition to a first-person shooter. It makes a genre that honestly, to me, has gotten very stale over the past few years. It gives it some new life. It's rejuvenated it quite a bit, in my opinion. And obviously, the second big thing about this game that makes it stand out is the Titans itself. These massive mechs that you can call into the battlefield to wreck shit. The Titans are fucking awesome. I think Respawn really balanced them out very well. You feel powerful, but you don't feel too powerful. You don't feel overpowered, which is one of the biggest uh, debate topics in uh, first-person shooters. When things are overpowered, then they get cheap and unfair, and people can't enjoy the game because everyone uses the same goddamn overpowered weapon, uh, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like Call of Duty, because a lot of those weapons are very much uh, exploited by the players. But anyway, so the Titans, they feel powerful, like you feel much more powerful than just the normal soldiers and the pilots on the ground who aren't in Titans. You feel like a god compared to them and you can just crush them. However, if they gang up on you or if there's another Titan, you don't feel overpowered to the point where Titans are cheap in this game. Like, you can, if you're not careful, be taken down very easily in a Titan. So I think that Respawn did a good job with balancing that out to make it not feel cheap. So yeah, this game is very fun so far. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really like the free flow movement, I like the parkour system, and I like the Titans. 
So everything new they added to the first person genre is very much welcome in my opinion. This game very much stands out from any other shooter on the market today, so. If you're a fan of first person shooters, but you're like me and feel that they've gotten stale over the past few years, pick up Titanfall. You will not regret it. Everything they added to this game makes shooters feel fresh again. And last, but not least, one of my most anticipated games of the year, the sequel to my game of the year for 2012. If you follow Beard of Banter, you know what I'm talking about. Here we have Borderlands, the pre-sequel, which came in this very nice, glossy, embossed uh, slipcover. I don't know if that's because I pre-ordered the game, but it is very nice. Now, when I heard that they were making a third Borderlands game to come up this year, I literally shit my pants. I'm joking, but I wish I did, because Borderlands came out of nowhere over the past few years and quickly became one of my favorite franchises. In fact, I know I've said in the past that Sonic 2 is my favorite game, but I've honestly thought about it lately that Sonic 2 might be overtaken by Borderlands 2. Like, I've spent so much time in that game and loved every single second of it, whereas Sonic 2, after playing it for the channel, I realized there's a lot of things I don't like about that game. Um, <clears throat> but that's beside, that's a, that's a topic for another time. So yeah, Borderlands 2 might possibly be my favorite game of all time. So when they announced a sequel to it that was also a prequel, hence the name pre-sequel, that would cover Handsome Jack's origin story, I was all for it. And then they announced even more things about it, the fact that it would be set on Pandora's moon, the fact that there would be jetpacks, butt stomps, cry cryogenic weapons, laser weapons, new characters, new character classes, you could play as motherfucking Claptrap. It was being developed by 2K Australia with Gearbox, and everything about this game just screamed, I want it. Like, I was so hyped for this game, I pre-ordered it, and I also got the shock drop. Uh, Slaughter Pit as a pre-order bonus. That's beside the point. I, I love Borderlands so much I pre-ordered this game and I played it for like three hours on launch day and I loved it. Um, so yeah, let me talk about pre-sequel and how it's different from Borderlands 2. It's very, very similar to Borderlands 2. Obviously, it was made with the same engine. Uh, it's a direct sequel, but it's not at that point of evolution yet. Like. The jump from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2 was a huge evolution for the series. We're not going to get that same evolution until Borderlands 3 comes out on next gen. So this game is a follow-up to Borderlands 2 that feels very similar. The shooting is very similar. The whole the game feel is very similar. The way it controls is very similar to Borderlands 2. So that's what's similar. What's different is the new mechanics that they included. Obviously the game is set on the fucking moon, so there's low gravity involved. You jump a lot higher, and Borderlands was always like Halo. It always had like those floaty jumps, but with this game, obviously they're gonna be really floaty. Um, so you jump much higher. Uh, since you're on the moon, you need an oxygen pack or an Oz kit uh, to breathe on the moon, but it also acts as uh, gear that can help you in battle. It can be used as a jetpack, uh, quote unquote double jump. It can be used to hover. Um, it can be used to slam you to the ground and hurt your enemies that way, or as they call it, the butt stomp in this game. Uh, there's some new weapon types, like there's cryogenic weapons, which freeze your enemies. There's laser rifles, which are fucking awesome. I have a burst laser rifle with fire elemental damage right now that I'm loving. Um, and then obviously, there's a... Uh, Returning characters and new characters galore. So yeah, it has the same charm and humor that Borderlands is known for. So yeah, while this game does feel very similar to Borderlands 2, a lot of the reviewers have been saying it's just more Borderlands. Is there anything necessarily wrong with that? I don't think anyone expected this game to be the evolution of Borderlands that Borderlands 2 was to the original. I don't think people are expecting that until it goes next gen. This game is a very worthy follow-up to Borderlands 2, possibly my favorite game of all time. And uh, the more I get to play this game, and the more I progress through the story, and the more new things they throw at me, I'll have to see exactly where this game holds up. It's going to be better than Borderlands 1. I don't think it'll beat Borderlands 2, but it is still a very good game in its own right. Borderlands the pre-sequel.
If you're a fan of Borderlands and you love Borderlands 2 as much as I did, pick it up. You won't be disappointed. Alrighty, guys. That concludes episode 7 of the Gaming Purchases Showcase. Thank you very much for watching. With that said, before I close out here, I'm just going to very quickly recap everything that I showed you in this video. Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 3DS. Destiny. Self Park, the Stick of Truth. Titanfall. And last but not least, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Alrighty guys, with that said, I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you like what you saw, you can click the subscribe button down below, share this with your friends, like, comment, all that good stuff. I will see you guys with possibly more gameplay soon. I can't promise anything right now, but we'll see how it goes. So with that said, I'm going to wrap things up here. See you guys later. Keep on gaming.